Well, we're here for the, the premiere at Sundance of an inconvenient sequel, Truth to Power. And Paramount has done an amazing job in uh, launching this movie tonight uh, and then in July in theaters all across America and then beyond. So we're here for the first official premiere at the Sundance Film Festival. Yeah, that's exciting to have to have the uh, the pole position, as they say in racing. Well, uh, it, it has kind of a double meaning. Everybody knows the phrase "speak truth to power," and that is, in a sense, exactly what this movie is intended to do. But there is also a sense uh, in, in which truth is itself a form of power. Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, said truth force was the most powerful force in, in, in the world. And the, the truth does have uh, a, a way of drawing people toward it, uh, even if it is inconvenient, as the last movie described it. Uh, and the sequel for some people will be inconvenient, but the truth will win out because this is a, a moral challenge we owe an obligation to our children and grandchildren not to leave them a world that is degraded and partly destroyed. We want them to be proud of us that we recognized what the scientists were warning us about and responded in a way that safeguarded their future. Yeah, it's a little bit more of a cinema verite style. That's not a phrase that I uh, use in everyday parlance, but you in the movie industry know it well. Uh, and I was so impressed with the, the skill that these filmmakers uh, uh, displayed in making this film. Uh, it also is different from the first movie in, in another respect. It has much more of an emphasis on the solutions because compared to 10 years ago, the solutions are widely available now and in many cases are cheaper than continuing to burn dirty fuel that caused the problem in the first place. Well, I, th I think that uh, having had the experience of working in the White House for eight years as vice president, in most situations has been a plus in uh, getting people to take my phone calls or letting me walk in their offices or places of work and talk to them. Well, I hope they get the, the same sense of commitment that all of us who made the movie have to solve the climate crisis. Uh, we, we can make our economy stronger, make our communities stronger, and save the future all at the same time. Well, Jeff Skoll, a participant, uh, encouraged me to do it and introduced me to Bonnie Cohen and John Schenck, the directors. And when I saw their talent and expertise, I said, yeah, let's go forward. And what they've done is a terrific movie. And it emphasizes the solutions. They're so much more available now and so much more affordable now. We're going to win this. We don't know yet what their policies will actually be in practice. We'll find out soon enough. But no one person can stop this movement. This is a mass movement now. Uh, and it's building all over this country and all over the world. And by the way, business and industry are now on board for the most part because the solutions are cheaper than continuing the old dirty practices that caused the problem in the first place. These ways of producing electricity and using it without burning fossil fuels are completely different now than 10 years ago. In many parts of the world, they're cheaper than burning coal or any other kind of fossil fuels. And that turns out to make all the difference because all of a sudden, the profit motive starts encouraging people to shift away from dirty fossil energy and toward clean renewable energy. It was just announced yesterday by NASA and NOAA and the British Meteorological Agency and the Japanese uh, agency that last year was the hottest year in recorded history. The year before was the second hottest. The year before that was the third hottest. Every year, seemingly, the record is broken again. 
every night on the television news is like a nature hike through the book of Revelation. People may not, some people may not want to use the phrase, but deep down, pretty much everybody gets it now. There are a few people in the fossil fuel industry, some ideologically motivated that want to kind of hold, hold back this mass movement, but they can't. We're going to win this. And you will be empowered with new facts and new sources of hope about the solutions and a lot of passionate intensity to get on with the solutions. And uh, I, want, I want Bonnie and John to, uh, to take part in this uh, because they're the ones that have done all this work. And I'll be back in Australia this summer at the University of Melbourne. Uh, my friend Don Henry uh, uh, is a professor there and I've worked with him. We have a, a very, very active uh, branch of the Climate Reality Project all across Australia. Of course, the tragedy that uh, afflicted the Great Barrier Reef this past year and the temperature records again and all of the changes in precipitation. Uh, everybody in Australia is really being uh, given a lot of evidence from Mother Nature. But I do know the connection between droughts and, and record downpours and, and floods and uh, the fires uh, much worse than you know what even a fire country uh, has been experiencing in the past. But I also know that the grassroots movement in Australia has been building and growing uh, and we're making a lot of progress.